Alphabet is apparently intending to transition one of its moonshot projects from venture to business in order to capitalize on its recent quantum computing successes. It was just a matter of time until everything fell into place. Google's goal is to construct a useful, error-corrected quantum computer by the end of the decade, according to a blog post. The search engine giant expects that the technology will aid in the resolution of a variety of major issues, such as world hunger and climate change, as well as the development of improved medications. Google has opened a new quantum AI facility in Santa Barbara to further develop the technology, which includes a quantum data center, hardware research laboratories, and quantum processor chip production facilities. According to the Wall Street Journal, it will spend billions of dollars developing the technology over the next decade. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you what Google's new company is working on and what it could mean for the future of computing and society itself. Scientists want to harness the power of time crystals to create powerful quantum computing devices capable of computational feats that all of the world's supercomputers combined cannot hope to achieve. Until recently, quantum computers were thought to be a future technology. While many academic institutions and organizations are significantly committed in constructing workable quantum systems, we have yet to witness a demonstration of quantum advantage, the moment at which a quantum computer can successfully do an operation that a supercomputer cannot in an acceptable length of time. There have been assertions, the most recent of which came from the Google Quantum team, although those claims are currently under peer review. Similar assertions have been contested in the past. The goal disclosed at Google I.O. comes a year and a half after Google declared quantum supremacy, a milestone in which a quantum computer performs a computation that would be impossible on a typical classical computer. Google claims that their quantum computer was able to complete a computation in 200 seconds that would have taken a standard supercomputer 10,000 years or more to complete. However, competitors rushing to construct their own quantum computers cast doubt on Google's stated achievement. Instead of 10,000 years, IBM said at the time that a typical supercomputer could do the operation in 2.5 days or less. According to Google, the added computing capacity might be valuable for correctly simulating molecules and hence nature. Because a quantum computer can perform simulations before a corporation spends in manufacturing real-world prototypes, this might help us design better batteries, create more carbon-efficient fertilizer, or develop more focused medications. Google anticipates that quantum computing will have a significant impact on AI development. Despite claiming to have achieved quantum supremacy, Google claims that it still has a long way to go before such machines are usable. While existing quantum computers have less than 100 qubits, Google is aiming for a system with 1 million qubits. It is a multi-stage procedure to get there. Google claims that it must first reduce the number of mistakes made by qubits before considering combining 1,000 physical qubits into a single logical qubit. This will establish the framework for the quantum transistor, which will be a key component of future quantum computers. According to Business Insider, Alphabet intends to spin out Sandbox Technology Inc., a quantum business it has been incubating as part of its Moonshot Initiatives program. The buy story makes it appear as though it is a done deal, implying that Sandbox would coexist with sibling businesses like as Google, DeepMind, and others. This is rather uncommon in the major tech company environment. Typically, when it comes to future technologies, we see Alphabet, IBM, Microsoft, and Meta gobbling up companies left and right. It's not every day that one of the major companies spins up a quantum computing firm. Our best assumption is that Sandbox intends to unveil more trials and wants to raise funds on its own. We'll have to wait for the launch announcements and official business registries to see if Sandbox intends to continue researching edge cases, such as time crystals, or if it intends to implement a strategy and work toward the actual development of a quantum computing system that it or Alphabet can market. In other words, we don't know if Sandbox is launching to seek funds for more research and hardware or to offer quantum innovations. The quantum superiority experiment last year was carried out on a chip called Sycamore, which included 53 superconducting quantum bits, or qubits. When qubits are chilled to near absolute zero, they acquire quantum mechanical features, allowing scientists to control them in more complex and useful ways than the basic on-off flows of current that comprise traditional computer bits. 
The goal is that one day, quantum computers will be strong enough to conduct computations that would take a conventional computer the duration of the universe to complete. The same basic sycamore design was used in this quantum chemistry experiment, which was disclosed in the August 28 edition of the journal Science, except it only employed 12 qubits. However, it highlights the system's adaptability, according to Ryan Babish, the Google project researcher in charge of building algorithms. It demonstrates that this gadget is, in reality, a totally programmable digital quantum computer that can be utilized for virtually any task you may undertake, he explains. The researchers initially simulated a simplified version of the energy state of a molecule made up of 12 hydrogen atoms, with each of the 12 qubits representing a single electron in each atom. They then simulated a chemical reaction in a molecule comprising hydrogen and nitrogen atoms, detailing how the electronic structure of the molecule would alter when the hydrogen atoms transferred from one side to the other. Because the energy of electrons governs how quickly a reaction happens at a certain temperature or concentration of different molecules, such simulations might help researchers understand exactly how that reaction works, and how it would vary if the temperature or chemical cocktail were changed. The simulation, known as the Hartree-Fock process, that the researchers ran can also be run on a conventional computer, therefore it did not establish the advantage of a quantum computer in and of itself. It was also carried out with the assistance of a classical computer, which utilized machine learning to analyze each computation and subsequently refine fresh rounds of quantum simulation. However, the achievement verifies the project's fundamental methodologies, which will be essential in future quantum chemistry simulations, according to Nicholas Rubin, a research scientist on Google's quantum team. It was also twice as massive as the previous record-holding quantum computer chemistry computation. According to Xiao Yuan, a postdoctoral research scientist at Stanford University's Institute for Theoretical Physics who authored a commentary accompanying Google's study in science, no quantum computer has done something a conventional computer could not. Even the company's attainment of quantum supremacy in 2019 was called into doubt by IBM researchers, who demonstrated a method to obtain the identical findings on a supercomputer in two and a half days, when Google's version took less than three minutes. However, the quantum chemistry experiment, according to Yuan, is a crucial step toward a larger aim. The most exciting news would be if we could utilize a quantum computer to tackle a classically hard and relevant topic, he says. If I were the CEO of a quantum computing business that may compete directly with Google or IBM in 2022, I'd be concerned. 2021 was one of the most exciting years in memory for quantum computing. It'll be difficult to surpass the development of time crystals, but it's a fair bet that Alphabet wouldn't launch a pet project unless there was money to be earned. What needs to be seen is how Sandbox and Google Quantum, which, as far as we know, will continue to exist after the spin-off will interact. Despite the hurdles ahead, Google seems upbeat about its prospects. We are at this tipping point, said Hartmut Nevin, the scientist in charge of Google's quantum AI effort, to the Wall Street Journal. We now have the crucial components in hand that make us confident. We know how to carry out the plan. Google eventually intends to provide quantum computing services over the cloud. So, what is your opinion Google's new quantum computer business? Do you believe it has a good chance of producing anything of value or are quantum computers in general nothing but overhyped? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.